Hey, good morning out there, everyone. Welcome back here to a Monday morning. I'm sure it's afternoon, evening for some of you folks out there. Nine, September 8th, 2025 is the date here. Latest activity shows a 3.4 earthquake across the region of, uh, looks like, maybe the Costa Rica area. One of the quakes down here, latest quake uh, around this region here, it looks like. But uh, maybe off the coast here of Nicaragua. As far as uh, states go, let's go ahead and see what we got going on up here today. I was just looking at the Mount Rainier seismograph stations here. This is the latest uh, digital seismograph station recording up to the current time period, and it is current date. That's definitely a well-defined earthquake here about 1 o'clock or so this morning, and a number of other earthquakes out there uh, since uh, late afternoon, early evening yesterday. Uh, nothing showing up here on the map, though. No earthquakes being reported, so I don't know if they're just a little slow to the start for the Monday uh, earthquake reviews or, or what's going on, but there's not even a whole lot of anything showing up out here. Uh, they do have one earthquake south of Mount St. Helens, a little point seven this morning. Uh, let's go see if we can spot that on the uh, seismograph station. Mount St. Helens here. And we're going to run the seismograph station right here and see what we got. Uh, what time was that? About 3.30 or so in the morning. That would probably be... Well, 3.30 is going to match um, pretty much this event right here, it looks like. Even though it looks like there's some bigger events out there. It's definitely got some... Uh, what looks like earthquake activity there across the Mount St. Helens region as well. So this one looks identical to this one here, but again, they're only showing just one earthquake out here. Uh, I still firmly believe that we're seeing a lot more earthquake activity across Mount Rainier and Mount St. Helens than what's being reported out here. That's just uh, my observations, and uh, you know the graphs out here really don't lie. Some of that may be outside interference or ice quakes, but uh, I do believe there's some earthquake activity mixed in there as well. Uh, let's go check out the Mount St. Helens. Um, ooh. I got a bad gateway here with this one. I wonder why. Looks like maybe they are... I'm guessing they're offline. See if Mount Rainier's working. Mount Rainier's working, but uh, uh, for some reason, uh, Mount St. Helens, not so much, but I guess we can access it here. Uh, here's a uh, gas emission stations up here across the uh, summit area of the Mount St. Helens region. I don't see anything here in terms of elevated activity. Uh, sulfur dioxide normal, hydrogen sulfide all normal there. And it goes to the current time period, so I don't see any unusual activity. Just some earthquake activity that's showing up on a couple of those seismograph stations. A lot of these seismograph stations are offline. Uh, this one's up. See, there was one this morning. This is actually... Um, shows the past 24 hours. Okay, so 1745. That's going to be UTC time. And that that uh, is current. And what looks like an earthquake there, right? one this morning i'm guessing that's going to be the uh that little event either way some earthquake activity up there i don't want to spend a whole lot of time on there because it's uh, there's not a whole lot to, to show obviously there is some earthquake activity but not a whole lot there on the map um, northern california handful of earthquakes up here the latest a 3.1 towards the southern end here of the cascadia subduction zone trimmer activity has been quite elevated out here in the last week or so, including, of course, yesterday, had a, a decent amount of trimmer. We'll check out the latest trimmer counts um, along the Cascadia and the slow slip events there later tonight. The Bay Area, fairly quiet up north here within the San Francisco Bay region, but we still got a little segment down here of earthquake activity. Uh, looks like that's on the San Andreas Fault here, including one just in the last hour, little point eight. A lot of clustering going on here 
yesterday and still somewhat today. Watch the park field section. There was one here, a little earthquake from yesterday. Awfully close there to the park field section and the creeping section uh, interaction that uh, along that boundary here of the um, San Andreas Fault. It's holding steady for now, though, but uh, we should see some larger activity eventually uh, out here. Southern California, not so much uh, in terms of anything above 2.5. A couple of earthquakes out there in the microquake range. Up in Idaho, number of earthquakes there. <clears throat> I include that 3.4 from yesterday. It looks like overnight we had a number of upper threes as well. The largest, a 3.9. Now, there's been quite a bit of clustering out here recently. Uh, in the uh, west of Yellowstone area. Hebgen Lake, there's a trail of activity leading to our current swarm location with really no main quake out here. There's been, uh, you know, not like there's a six-pointer and there's a bunch of other aftershocks. Uh, it's not just one location either. There's a bunch out here across the area. Uh, more than likely, just looking at all these fault systems here showing elevated activity, could just be plate tectonic stress out here uh, but we'll definitely continue to watch that because that's a decent little swarm up there in Idaho at uh, around the Spencer Idaho area looks like it's about five six miles deep or so underneath this region really nothing uh, to look at there at the surface levels now whether that's related to Yellowstone or not the hot spot itself is back over here now right it used to well Throughout time, a long time ago here, you could follow the hotspot trail through Idaho and down through portions of Oregon and Nevada. Uh, but now we're up here. It could have something to do with maybe some faults, you know, just a strain that's building up out here. But I'll definitely continue to watch it. Been getting uh, various swarms out here, including that swarm in Nevada, Idaho. You know, it's definitely... Uh, a lot of areas inland are showing some uh, major strain activity recently. One more earthquake there in Nevada from this morning. It looks like a little 1.9. Uh, Yellowstone, let's go see here real quick what we got. I'm sure we'll see those three-pointers quite nicely on the uh, seismograph stations. Let's check this out here real quick. There they are. Showing up uh, quite nicely. So it looks like maybe there was some more earthquake activity out there as well. It's weird how they have like a double tap feature. See that? Ba-boom, ba-boom. A bunch of these look like double tap earthquakes. It's weird. I'm not for sure what exactly would be causing that type of uh, reading. Most of the time you just get an earthquake and then... Yeah, well, it wouldn't look like this. It just looks a little odd. So there was, uh, let's see what we got. The last earthquake, a little point nine at 7.30. So about 7.30 here is going to be, well, this is going to be, uh, I think, mountain time here. So maybe, maybe this event right here. But there's a, definitely an interesting earthquake sequence last night up there bunch of threes and then some odd events in between there let's see if uh, we can pick up a seismograph station a little bit closer that one picked it up as well see there's even on this graph you can see that double tap feature on the majority of those it's definitely weird so we'll continue to watch that some interesting activity up there uh, oil fields pretty active out across Texas here today, including down south of the uh, San Antonio area near Hilltop. I believe there's quite a few oil fields down here as well, listed all over the map. Uh, the satellite view here, as you zoom in, uh, you can definitely see some within the vicinity here. Maybe some have been wiped off the map here, erased um, throughout time. But yeah, definitely a, a lot of oil fields out there in this area of Texas getting hit with some earthquake activity uh, new madrid seismic zone two earthquakes today 1.6 and a 1.9 
Nothing big going on there for now, but there is potential. That's for sure. Uh, there's our earthquake that I was talking about last night. I said to watch this area, and sure enough, it popped up. Um, there was a 5.1 down here yesterday, and uh, most of the time when earthquake activity happens out here, we'll see the South Sandwich Trench show some further movement, and, you know, what do you know? There we go. 5.55 in the morning for a 4.9. Uh, let's see, the Curl Cam Chatka still some, got some activity up there from that 8.8 .8 that struck back in July. A little bit of aftershock sequences. Uh, Japan here, a couple earthquakes around the Nankai Trough. Still watching that region closely. Pretty good cluster going on here across the Indonesia area. Uh, New Zealand does look like there's been a newer quake up here. Four point, looks like a four-pointer. Um, let's see, USGS not reporting the more recent one, uh, but there was another earthquake down here. It looks like just very close to the Alpine Fault, if not towards the southern end. Pretty good cluster going on there across New Zealand. Watch those zones that are fairly well primed for some big earthquake activity. Uh, South America, not so much going on down there. The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet aside from some activity around the Iceland region. And uh, the rest of the world out here, just typical movement. Some aftershock sequences there from the uh, Turkey area, Turkey earthquake. All right, uh, let's see what else we got here for space weather. I want to look more into that Idaho activity. It's really interesting there. Uh, nothing major going on for uh, flaring activity. In fact, we're way down into the B flare category, B 5.9. So I'm not looking at anything in, in terms of any major flaring. A look at the magnetogram image here of the sunspots shows uh, oh, if anyone's going to produce a little flare, maybe this area back here. But really, not all that uh, all that impressed with this area. Everything else is fading off. As uh, far as what's uh, coming around the bend, so to speak, on the far side, let's take a look. This is a day or so old. Here's the earth-facing side. Eastern limb, eastern limb's going to be back over here. Earth-facing side. So these sunspots, not a whole lot coming around. It looks pretty quiet out there, even on the far side. There's some sunspot activity, but I don't see any massive areas. Uh, we do have a coronal hole that's facing us, or will face us here in a number of days. This region right here is center disk of the sun, so that will be, uh, you know, most certainly earth-directed in that position so we'll wait here a couple days and then we got a couple more days once it's uh, centered here for the arrival of the high-speed solar wind stream but that uh, could stir up some further earthquake activity just due to the magnetic dynamics of these coronal holes as they shoot off from the sun in a kind of a straight fashion and uh, a lot of times that can uh, it seems like it stirs up earthquake activity on the planet here uh, Storm Prediction Center for severe weather. Got a little slight risk here across uh, portions of Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas. Uh, looks like there's a little 2% chance for some tornado activity wind. And, uh, of course, these guys know how to get the big hail threat, the big, big, big hail done. So there is a decent threat for some big hail, large hail, uh, there in the hatched area. 15% chance there. All right, uh, cooler weather here for the West Coast coming in. Got a slight chance of rain there for tomorrow as well. Watching this area down in the Gulf uh, about the 19th or so of this month. Obviously, this can change, but it does look like there's some tropical system there heading into the Gulf, hitting Louisiana uh, head on there. But, you know, this model weighs out there. But it does look like it's picking up and hinting at some type of tropical development. Uh, so we will continue to check back on that and see how the models hang out uh, in terms of the accuracy. I'm trying to think what else there is. Uh, it's definitely a Monday. I can feel it. Let's see what we got here for the uh, next close approach asteroids. All right, um, well, I always look at this number first. Millions of miles away. 
Uh, and that's the case there for all of them that are being reported here on this page. So it uh, does look like the majority of these are newly discovered. They're always discovering uh, new asteroids every single day out there. But uh, for now, we're pretty safe. Uh, a little bit of earthquake activity there on Barrett, it looks like. That's Southern California. One on Japan, one there in Nevada. Uh, I do think something is brewing out here across the West Coast. Whether it's the Cascadia getting ready to pop or something else brewing. Uh, there's been too many, uh, too many swarms out here in various locations over the last seven days. And technically over the last week, or the, excuse me, the last month. Look at that swarm just sticking out there in northern Nevada. That was a big-time swarm. We got uh, 77 earthquakes, and I'm sure a lot more. And uh, there was no main quake sequence there. It's just a bunch of earthquakes with a couple bigger ones in between, but no main quake. Same for up there around the Sawtooth Fault and uh, areas across Hebgen Lake. It's got a trail of activity leading up here, though. It's very interesting. All righty. We'll catch you guys out here uh, later tonight for the Monday night update. Have a good one, folks. Stay safe out there.